This episode is part of the transformational podcast Systems in Motion. If you want to learn more about the leverage points, please listen to the opening episode. Why do we need marine protected areas and how do they contribute to a healthy climate? This will be discussed by Daira in this episode of the podcast. Imagine a healthy ocean. Its abundance and vitality restored. Oceans have now become 30% more acidic than they were at the beginning. And not of just any world. ocean. We all know about the need to fight the climate crisis. Your But ocean. many don't know just how important the ocean is. We're actually seeing the reef go straight back into Vibrant, another bleaching year in 2017. See it turn white Healthy in the space of a week. It's the scariest Fish thing I've ever seen in my recover. life. The ocean is the largest ecosystem of the Earth covering approximately 70% of the Earth's surface and it contains 97% of the Earth's water. Therefore, it has a strong influence on the Earth's weather and climate while being an important carbon sink. I think the ocean also produces about 70% of the atmospheric oxygen because of the photosynthetic activity of phytoplankton, mainly plants, algae and some bacteria. Additionally, there's evidence that life probably began in the ocean. Welcome to the podcast. Today's episode is about marine protected areas and the Great Barrier Reef. I'm Daira and I'm Helena and I'm going to ask you some questions today. So what exactly is the marine protected area? Well, there are several definitions, but for an area to be declared as a marine protected area, At a minimum, it needs to comply with the international definition of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, short IUCN. Accordingly, a protected area is a clearly defined geographical space, recognized, dedicated and managed through legal or other effective means to achieve the long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystem services and cultural values. Well, but why should marine protected areas be implemented? Can you maybe give some context on that? Yes, for sure. I mean, overfishing, pollution and habitat degradation threatens the Earth's ocean. Additionally, you must be in mind that climate change, including ocean acidification and ocean warming, has a significant impact on marine life and ecosystems. For example, the higher sea surface temperatures increase the intensity and severity of mass coral bleaching, algae blooms and dead zones. You're probably wondering what dead zones are. They are marine areas with a very low oxygen concentration in the water so that marine life cannot survive in those areas. However, according to the IUCN and several scientific papers published in The Nature, marine protected areas are a key management strategy to both prevent marine biodiversity loss and to safeguard ecosystem services that support economies and the livelihoods of coastal communities. In addition, IUCN also argues that their networks are important to sustain climate change resilience and to rebuild social and ecological resilience. But then what are the benefits for biodiversity and human well-being of effectively managed marine protected areas? Yeah, there are many. For example, marine protected areas can promote the conservation of areas that harbor important biodiversity and improve marine ecosystem conditions. They can enhance the complexity of habitats and the survival rate of juvenile fishes. For example, by protecting soaring and serving as a nursery. They can also improve species diversity, the biomass and the size of fishes. Enhancing the conditions of marine ecosystems may lead to a better provision of marine ecosystem services that then contribute significantly to human well-being. For example, a recent study by Brand et al. highlights that the benefits of increasing marine protected areas worldwide exceed the cost significantly. Nevertheless, they also argue that the outcomes are higher for pristine areas with a high biodiversity. Okay, I see. And how many marine protected areas are already implemented? Well, government's commitment in relation to the Convention on Biological Diversity's IG Biodiversity Target 11 have pushed forward the establishment of marine protected areas. 
especially as it implies a 10% coverage of marine protected areas by 2020. Thereby, over the last 20 years, the expansion of marine protected areas increased from about 3% up to 7%. Even though people believe the IG target 11 is too ambitious, but it would only make up for 1% of marine habitats. On the other hand, a meta-analysis highlights that the global coverage of marine protected areas needs to be scaled up to 30% to meet marine protected areas' biodiversity and fishery goals. Respectively, the IUCN encouraged governments to expand marine protected areas' coverage to 30% by 2030 to create a sustainable ocean, which is also part of the Sustainable Development Goals. Interesting. Um, could you maybe name a concrete example of a marine protected area to get a more concrete idea? Sure. For example, um, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park at the coast of Australia is not only a World Heritage Site, but also a large marine protected area. It covers an area of about 344,000 kilometers, and it includes a wide range of ecosystems, ranging from the prevalent coral reefs to coastal seagrass beds and seafloor habitats, harboring globally significant biodiversity. The Great Barrier Reef also provides habitat for many species, including those of special conservation concern. So, beyond the exceptional environmental, social and cultural value, the Great Barrier Reef is also an important economic resource for the local communities that depend on the functioning and the resilience of the ecosystem. That's really impressive. How do they manage such a big marine protected area? Yes, it is really impressive. The state and federal waters of the Great Barrier Reef region are managed in cooperation. The main priorities are long-term conservation and protection of the environment, biodiversity and cultural heritage values, as well as its sustainable use. Therefore, appropriate boundaries and zones are defined, which is really typical for marine protected areas. The Great Barrier Reef is divided into seven marine zone types to manage the multiple uses that occur. Totally, one-third of the Great Barrier Reef are no-take zones to maximize the protection of biodiversity while allowing a sustainable use, including a broad range of recreational and commercial activities. But consider that some of the access rights are managed through a permit system. You may have heard that the Great Barrier Reef is showing signs of deterioration. So the main challenge here is to restore the resilience of the ecosystem, which mainly requires the mitigation of climate change, being its most significant threat here. So marine protected areas are not a panacea? For sure they are not, but um, well-managed marine protected areas, especially in no-take zones, effectively mitigate some of the threats and restore marine biodiversity. They can also mitigate the effects of climate change, but you have to keep in mind that a drastic reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is needed for maintaining marine ecosystem functioning and the conservation progress we already made. So, greenhouse gas emissions are really the key for healthy oceans. Daira, could you maybe summarize how marine protected areas are related to the 12 leverage points by Donella Meadows? That's a really tricky question, but I will try to answer it anyway. So, marine protected areas are stabilizing stocks because they have the power to mitigate threats to marine ecosystems, promote biodiversity conservation and safeguard ecosystem services. Then, marine protected areas are also negative or balancing feedback loop because they are created by humans as a control to maintain the important ocean state system within safe bounds. Here Meadows for example also states that its strength is relative to the impact it is designed to correct. So in this regard, biodiversity loss but also climate change increase in strength. Therefore, marine protected areas also need to be strengthened by scaling their coverage up to 30%. Then you could have noticed the reinforcing feedback loop within marine protected areas itself. By this I mean that improving marine ecosystem conditions will lead to a better provision of ecosystem services and thereby also human well-being. In the end, marine protected areas are also related to the goal of the system. Remember the Sustainable Development Goals, especially the one of life below water and the IG Biodiversity Target 11 of the Convention of Biological Diversity. Thank you for the summary. And we will now leave you with some closing words by Jane Lubchenko from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Thanks for listening. I've also seen places come back to life because people cared, because they were willing 
to do something. They were willing to be creative, to engage others, and to be problem solvers, not just to walk away. That's what we need more of.